Detective Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a crime thriller film called, Killing Them Softly. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. During the presidential election campaign in 2008, Johnny Amato, also known as Squirrel, contracts Frankie for a job. Squirrel wants Frankie to get another guy to help, so he brings in an Australian guy named Russell. Squirrel, however, doesn't approve of Russell and says that the Australian has no manners. In Russell's defense, Frankie insists that he has no problem with getting things done. Russell tries talking back, which only puts Squirrel in an even fouler mood. While no information about the gig has been revealed yet, Squirrel points out whoever can pull it off will get at least $30,000. He insults Russell yet again before insisting that Frankie needs to find someone else. He's adamant that Frankie got the wrong guy this time, and he's not going to take the risk. After their meeting, Frankie and Russell meet down the street and talk about the job offer. Russell expresses how much he hates Squirrel, saying that the man can't even decide if he wants him or not. He isn't bothered, though, since he has his own thing going on which is stealing and selling purebred dogs with his friend, Kenny. Russell says that they can sell them for a great price in Florida, and with enough money, he could finally become a dealer. When Frankie finally asks Russell if he plans to join him, Russell replies that Frankie should first find out what the job is. If Frankie still wants to push through with it, then he'll join him. But if Squirrel doesn't want Russell to be a part of it, then he won't. When Frankie returned to Squirrel's office, Squirrel tells him that he's asked around about Russell, but no one seems to know the guy. He explains that the job they're supposed to do involves clever people who can sniff out and shoot anyone who looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. He is of course referring to Russell, and Squirrel wants to avoid any fighting. More confused than ever, Frankie asks Squirrel to tell him what exactly needs to be done. Squirrel finally confesses they will be robbing a card game that Marky Trapman runs. Frankie says that those things are heavily protected, and even if they get the job done, dozens of people will be after them. Squirrel refutes this by saying that no one will ever suspect them because they will only look at one guy, and that's Marky Trapman. Thinking that he knows where this is going, Frankie assumes that they'll be setting Marky up, but Squirrels tells him that they're not. Apparently, Marky robbed his own poker game four years ago, which pissed everyone off. This caused people to lose a lot of money and even the games were forced to stop. No one knows that Marky did it so a man named Dylan was sent to find the culprit. He started interrogating Marky and even roughed him up but Marky insisted that he was innocent the entire time. Feeling like he was just wasting his time and that the perpetrator could just be anyone, Dylan let it go, and the game started up again. Everything started going back to normal, but then in a poker game one night, the men playing talked about the time when the games were shut down. Marky started laughing and admitted that he was the one who knocked over the games. The men around the table didn't care though since they weren't the ones who lost their money, so they just let it slide. This makes Squirrel believe that if they are to rob Marky's second card game, people will just assume that it's Marky's doing again, given his history. Still concerned about the outcome of the job, Frankie asks Squirrel about Russell's involvement, and Squirrel casually tells him that Frankie can take Russell with him for all he cares as long as they get the job done. As Frankie and Russell drive to the location of the card games, Frankie realizes that Russell only brought two pairs of dishwashing gloves for them to use in the robbery. Frankie complains that the gloves are too thick, but Russell doesn't seem to mind. The sawed-off shotgun that Russell brought makes Frankie even more uncomfortable. He quips that they'll end up killing everyone in the room even if they just want to shoot one person with that weapon. On top of his worries, Frankie starts fussing about how everyone will think that they're amateurs but Russell remains uncaring. With their weapons in hand, Frankie and Russell carry out the robbery. During the heist, Frankie guards the players to make sure they don't do anything. Russell, on the other hand, follows Marky to where the money is being kept. Marky slowly gathers the money, and as he does, he tries to convince Russell to just walk away, even though he's pointing a gun at him. Russell doesn't give in and simply escorts him back to where the players are. Still not satisfied with the money they gathered, Frankie demands each player to hand over whatever money they have left in their wallets. Marky protests, saying that they should leave the players alone since they already got what they came for. This annoys Russell so he hits him with his gun, and Frankie continues to demand money from the players, threatening to shoot them if they don't oblige. As Russell collects all the cash on the table, the man on the television talks about the financial crisis the US is currently facing, and when they are done, Russell finally leaves with Frankie in tow. After the incident, a man named Driver who knows all about Marky and his card games tries getting the help of Dylan to catch the robbers. Dylan sends Jackie in his place and Driver starts giving him a rundown. He explains that Marky's card games got hit some nights ago then describes how the culprits look like based on Marky's description. According to Marky, the robbers were probably kids given the way they smelled and talked. Knowing what Marky did before, Jackie doubts that he's telling the truth. 
It could be him again for all they know since no one would believe that he'll rob his card games twice. With that out of the way, Jackie adds that it could also be some other guys who knew about what Marky did before. Jackie suggests that they should start with Marky and make an example out of him to put the people's minds at ease. Reluctant, Driver asks Jackie to just talk to him without hurting him too much. Jackie disagrees and insists on killing Marky, but Driver stresses that the people who run things want to avoid murder. After talking to Driver, Jackie orders his men, Stephen and Barry, to question Marky about the robbery and beat him up. On their way to Marky's place, Barry expresses his concern that Marky will make everything hard for them. Sure enough, Marky pleads innocent, saying that he knows nothing about the kids who robbed the card games. The two men don't believe him, of course, so they continue to beat him up until he's all bloody and throwing up. The men were just having fun beating Marky up at that point. They take turns with hitting him and once Marky looks like he's had enough, they leave him on the road. After the robbery, Frankie meets up with Russell who had returned from his trip to Florida to sell dogs. They go home and have a smoking session while Frankie talks about how Marky was beaten up for what they did. Russell's been sleepless for a week now so he's not any good to talk to. He groggily replies that he already knows about this because his friend Kenny had already told him about it. This sends Frankie into a shock and he starts yelling about how Kenny Gill works for Dylan. Despite his friend's panic, Russell doesn't seem to understand anything that he's saying. With nothing else to do, Frankie gets in his car and leaves. As he drives away, he can't help but glance at his rearview mirror to check if he's being followed. Jackie lets Driver know that he already has Squirrel and the robbers. He tells him about how one of the kids unwittingly shared all the information about the robbery to Kenny, who everyone knows works for Dylan. For the second time, Jackie brings up the idea of killing Marky before restarting the games, but Driver refuses, saying they already found the culprits. Besides, Jackie's men have done enough damage on Marky. Their argument continues with Jackie insisting that Marky has to go since he made a mistake. Driver starts to think that Jackie may be right, and he asks if he could carry out the hit on Marky himself. Jackie says that he can, but he'll need a man named Mickey to kill Squirrel in his stead. Squirrel knows both him and Dylan and he doesn't want to see Squirrel cry or beg for his life since they knew each other. He adds that he wants to kill them softly without any feelings involved. Hiring Mickey may be a problem for Driver who claims that he's an expensive man but Jackie retorts that he isn't. As Jackie and Mickey meet, they do some catching up together. They talk about different things ranging from Mickey's wife to the time he got arrested in Maryland for felony possession of a firearm. He explains that he just bought the gun and didn't even get the chance to use it. He might go to prison for buying a gun that was meant for shooting geese but he says he doesn't mind. He's done time before already, he can do it again. After having his emotional exchange with Jackie, he finally asks about the job. Jackie tells him about killing Marky and Squirrel but Mickey says that a double hit is risky, especially since he's restricted in New York and Maryland. He's not even supposed to be there with him, but Mickey says that he'll still take the other job. Relieved, Jackie leaves Squirrel in his care while he sets his sight on Marky. When it's finally time to carry out the hit, Kenny and Jackie follow Marky in a car. Jackie orders Kenny to drive next to Marky, making sure they're close enough for Jackie to take the shot. As soon as their cars are side by side, Jackie shoots Marky, hitting him in the hand and face. As if that wasn't enough, Marky's car is hit by another vehicle, adding injury to death. Once he's done with Marky, Jackie goes to Mickey's hotel room only to find that he didn't do his job. He sees Mickey there, having the time of his life with a woman and some drinks. When the woman leaves, all Mickey does is talk about his wife, saying he doesn't care about anything else anymore. This makes Jackie realize that Mickey is in no shape to do the job, so he threatens Mickey that he'll call the cops on him if he doesn't get himself together. After that, Jackie meets up with Driver again, complaining about the problem he's having with Mickey. Jackie says that Mickey has changed over the years, and has become completely worthless. Driver blames Jackie for even involving Mickey, so he says that Jackie should take care of him. Jackie then hatches an elaborate plan of instigating a fight between Mickey and a woman in his hotel room that will result in his arrest. Meanwhile, Russell is arrested for drug possession. Back at Squirrel's place, Frankie and Squirrel talk about what happened to Russell. Though he says he knew that it was bound to happen, Frankie still feels bad for his friend especially since there's nothing he can do to help him. Squirrel replies that Russell took his chances, which doesn't make Frankie feel any better. Frankie is worried that sooner or later, someone will grab them and no one will be around to help him either. Frankie says that he's got no friends, but the three of them are all in the same position, except nothing has happened to him and Squirrel yet. Squirrel tells Frankie to calm down, but Frankie continues to blabber about how everything is going wrong and how they're all on their own. One day, as Frankie's sitting in a bar he frequents, Jackie shows up and sits beside him. 
Not knowing who the guy is, Frankie casually talks to Jackie. It isn't long before Jackie reveals that he's actually looking for him. This takes him by surprise and Frankie asks Jackie who told him about his usual hangout. Jackie won't reveal much, saying that it's one of Frankie's friends. Frankie is determined to know the identity of that person but Jackie won't say a thing. Instead, he asks Frankie for Squirrel's whereabouts but Frankie is reluctant to answer, saying he doesn't even know who Jackie is. Jackie replies that only a few people do and that it would be wise to just tell him where Squirrel's going to be. Jackie takes out his phone and asks Frankie if he wants them to contact Dylan so they could ask him who Jackie is, but Frankie declines. Jackie asks him once more where Squirrel will be, but Frankie insists that he doesn't know. Jackie casually gets up to leave but Frankie calls out to him, making him stay. Jackie mentions that he still has things to do, like finding someone else who knows where Squirrel's going to be the following night. Jackie also makes it clear that he plans on finding out where Frankie will be the day after, scaring Frankie and making him rethink his decision to keep quiet. Seeing that Frankie is having second thoughts, Jackie sits beside Frankie again, hinting that it's entirely up to him to save himself. Frankie gets emotional, saying he can't do it, but Jackie tells him that Squirrel won't even think twice about giving him up if it was the other way around. Frankie finally gives in and asks Jackie what he needs to do, so Jackie instructs him to find someone who knows where Squirrel's going to be. Since Frankie already knows where Squirrel will be, Jackie makes him take him there. For the second time, Frankie isn't sure if he could do what's being asked of him, but Jackie reminds him that he made a mistake so he needs to make up for it. Jackie and Frankie drive to Squirrel's place and because he's feeling guilty, Frankie insists that Squirrel isn't a bad guy. Frankie says that Squirrel has always done right by him but Jackie brings up the incident when Squirrel got Frankie in jail. He still tries to defend Squirrel, saying that he didn't mean it, but Jackie disagrees. When Squirrel finally shows up, Jackie and Frankie realize that he's brought a girl with him. After the girl's gone inside, Jackie gets out of the car and waits for Squirrel to get back to his own vehicle before shooting him with a shotgun from afar. Unable to bear the sight, Frankie closes his eyes. Jackie wants to make sure that Squirrel's really dead so he walks up to Squirrel's car only to find the man lying in his pool of blood, still alive. Squirrel tries to crawl away, but Jackie shoots him in the head, killing him instantly. Jackie goes back to the car and orders Frankie to drive since the cops are starting to show up. Nervous, Frankie drives like a maniac with an intense fear of getting caught. No matter how many times Jackie tells him to slow down, Frankie just can't seem to do it. He gets all emotional again then tells Jackie to just take the wheel. They trade places and Jackie drives until they arrive at the parking area. Without warning, he shoots Frankie repeatedly. After the ordeal, Jackie carefully wipes all traces of his fingerprints that he might have left on the vehicle. Taking one last look at Frankie and the car, Jackie leaves the parking lot. The bodies of Squirrel and Frankie are taken to the morgue, and Jackie drives to meet up with Driver once more. In a bar, Jackie and Driver discuss Jackie's payment and as they watch Barack Obama give his election victory speech on television. After receiving the money, Jackie goes to the bathroom to count. When he comes back, he says that the money Driver gave him isn't enough. Driver reasons that Jackie is just getting the same amount of money that Dillian usually gets. Unhappy, Jackie retorts that he had to pay Mickey even though he didn't do his job, but Driver tells him to just take it up with Dylan. Jackie reveals that Dylan already died that morning. Driver says that the higher-ups are going to be sorry once they hear about Dylan's death, but Jackie makes it clear that he doesn't care. Obama's speech continues and Jackie couldn't disagree more with what he had to say. To Jackie, they weren't living in a community because if you live in America, you're on your own. America isn't a country, it's a business. For the last time, Jackie firmly demands his payment. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.